Bosnia and Herzegovina is holding general elections on October the 2nd. That is a little less than a month from today, 7th of September. A country of three and a half million people declared independence exactly 30 years ago. And it was immediately engulfed in a bloody war that lasted over three years and left 100,000 people dead and two million people displaced. Bosnian Herzegovinians will choose the members of their tripartite presidency, the state parliament, the parliament of the two entities in which the country is divided, that is the National Assembly of Republika Srpska and the House of Representatives of the Federation of Bosnia-Herzegovina, also known as the Bosniak Croat or Muslim Croat Federation. And finally, in the federation, they will vote for the 10 cantonal assemblies of the uh, cantons. The previous elections, general elections, were held in 2018. Hello and welcome. My name is uh, Thomas Miljerina, and this is a panel discussion on uh, Bosnia elections, a call for reform. It is uh, the fifth webinar in a series organized this year by uh, the group of the European Socialists and Democrats in the European Parliament as part of the Global Progressive Forum. I'm not part of the GPF. The GPF invited me to moderate uh, this uh, event. And to kick off the discussion, I would like to ask uh, Andreas uh, Schieder, who is an Austrian MEP and is the chair of the Global Progressive Forum, to explain what are you and why you decided to have this discussion. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thanks uh, everybody who is uh, joining us, especially the speakers uh, of today afternoon, but also those uh, which are watching and uh, participating in our today's debate. The Global Progressive Forum is a platform broader than the S&D group in the European Parliament. It should connect uh, politicians, but not only politicians, but all think, uh, think tanks, trade unionists, youth activists, journalists, and other people globally to discuss also a progressive agenda and situation worldwide. And it's also a tool of interconnection of Europeans with the other uh, continent. So I would say... Today is very specific because we're discussing the elections, the upcoming elections in Bosnia-Herzegovina. And we could say, of course, elections are important for Bosnia itself. It is important from a European perspective, but not only. I would say also it has a global impact as, as the situation on the Balkans always has also a global impact. And therefore, I think it fits very well to discuss uh, today uh, on the question of, of, of Bosnia, it fits in this framework which, which the Global Progressive Forum tries to provide with a lot of activities like also this kind of webinars. You are a member of the Parliament uh, Delegation for Relations with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. You chair the uh, Delegation for uh, uh, Macedonia. You're a rapporteur of Kosovo. In other words, the Balkans are by no means foreign to you. Therefore, you will stay in this debate. But let me introduce the other uh, participants, starting with uh, Alma Zadic. She is uh, the Minister of Justice of the Federal Republic of Austria. She is a member of the Green Party of Austria. But uh, in particular, she was born in uh, Tuzla, that is the north of uh, Bosnia, from where she had to leave in uh, 1994 at the age of uh, uh, 10 and become a refugee in uh, Austria. Quite a, quite a biography from a refugee to a justice minister. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, from Bosnia itself, we have uh, Srećko Latal, which is a regional editor at the Balkan In Investigative Reporting Network. In the 90s, he was uh, Associated Press Correspondent and later became Sarajevo Bureau Chief, then moved to be a communication expert and political advisor for the European Union and the World Bank. He was also in the International Crisis Group from 2008 and to 2013. Good afternoon, Srećko Latal. Good afternoon. Uh, happy to be here. Let me start with you. Uh, Bosnia has a long tradition now of post-war elections, and none of them have been actually an easy matter. This one looks particularly important and particularly complicated. Is it so? And can you explain why? Sure. And, and, and you're absolutely right. Um, you may know uh, or may not know that uh, the last elections brought many problems. Uh, the state government uh, took one year or even more to be established, and the government in one of the two entities of Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, in the uh, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina was never really established. So essentially in the Federation entity, uh, we had for the last eight years uh, the, 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 the government in the technical mandate 
Um, and the main reason for this is essentially because the political scene in the country has effectively co collapsed as uh, pretty much all main uh, Bosniak, Croat, and Serb parties started fighting each other. Uh, these elections um, are still something different and may bring even greater crisis. Unfortunately, um, Bosnia and Herzegovina for many years have been associated with, with crisis. But uh, what is different now is that uh, some of the political changes and, and demographic trends which took place in Bosnia and Herzegovina have uh, resulted in the situation which by uh, these elections or after these elections may essentially uh, undermine uh, the Dayton Peace Accord itself. Uh, what is happening now is uh, that according to some assessments done by some of the uh, Western uh, agents and, and, and uh, actors, uh, there is a, a serious possibility that uh, political parties representing majority of Bosnian Croat voters may use, may, may lose uh, their uh, political presence or control in the House of Peoples of the BH Federation. And in that case, uh, Bosnian Croat parties as well as Bosnian Serb leadership has already announced that they will not uh, participate in joint institutions anymore because they would consider this situation to essentially represent the end of the Dayton Peace Accord. In this situation, uh, a part of the international community, mainly American uh, administration, uh, Office of the High Representative, have uh, contemplated a package of uh, changes uh, as you may know, uh, uh, electoral reform was negotiated between local politicians uh, moderated by uh, US and, and EU uh, officials in January, February, and March this year, but unfortunately, uh, these attempts failed. And uh, in this kind of situation, the Office of the High Representative and the US administration and some uh, European uh, officials are contemplating possible imposition of a, a package of changes that would ensure that Bosnian crowd political parties remain politically present in the Federation, but uh, that, that package uh, would also uh, supposed to remove the blocking mechanisms which uh, Bosnian crowd parties, namely uh, HDZ, were using in, in recent years to blackmail uh, the country and to try to uh, get the, the, the decisions uh, which they prefer. So, um, as I said, we are now in the situation. Since we are now on the, on the federation and on and on what's happening with the Bosnian Croats, let me try to play the devil's lawyer here. Do you have some understanding for the Croatian posi for the Croat position? Uh, they they see what happened with the Serbs in the Republika Srpska, and wouldn't they, in a certain sense, be interested in in having the same? If if there is no possibility to get out of the um, of the nationalist. Uh, uh, way of doing things that has that has prevailed in Bosnia. Um, I mean, the way how I understood your question, I will answer it in that way, and and then the answer would be absolutely yes. I mean, uh, a major part of the problem, and and uh, one of the main reasons for for this uh, perpetual crisis in Bosnia Herzegovina has been attitudes of uh, Bosnian Croat and Bosnian Serb leaders. Uh, Bosnian Croat leadership for many years have been focusing on reviving or re-establishing the wartime uh, Bosnian Croat entity called Herzeg Bosna. Uh, at the same time, uh, Milorad Dodik, the, 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 the leader of Bosnian Serbs and currently uh, the Serb member of the uh, state presidency, has been ever since coming back to power in 2005 has been winning one election after another by promising to take Republika Srpska outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina and essentially complete uh, the, 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 the task that was set in motion by the Bosnian Serb leadership in 1991 and 1992. Uh, additional problem which emerged in recent years was that many Bosniak parties unfortunately accepted um, and tried to, to mirror these uh, 
conflictory uh, attitudes and, and political practices. And as we have seen weakening of European Union and American presence in the country, as well as weakening of the work of the Office of the High Representative, uh, these parties in, in different ways essentially uh, started to seriously undermine different parts of the Dayton Peace Accord, uh, the working of the joint state and entity institutions and so on. Unfortunately, Can to we, make the situation... Can I ask you a question? We, we spoke about the, the Bosnian Croat nationalism. We, we know about the Bosnian Serbs nationalism and Milorad Dodik. There is also an increasing Bosniak, that is Bosnian Muslims uh, nationalism. Can we talk about that? Because we talked less about it. Yes, I mean, this nationalism was, was present mostly as a response to the Bosnian Croat and Bosnian Serb nationalism ever since the beginning of the war in, in 1992. And uh, for a number of years, while the country was effectively managed by Americans and by the Office of the High Representative, these three separate nationalisms have been, let's say, put under control. Uh, then uh, these three nationalisms were supposed to, or we were hoping that they would disappear gradually through the uh, enlargement process, which uh, European Union started after the Thessaloniki summit in 2003. But unfortunately, the, uh, the enlargement perspective uh, disappeared uh, for all of the Balkans effectively uh, over the last uh, five, six years. And as a result of, of this fact, uh, we have seen escalation of nationalism across the Balkans, including in Bosnia and Herzegovina on all three sides. So uh, as I said, unfortunately, what we have today in Bosnia and Herzegovina is three conflicting uh, nationalist narratives. Uh, Bosniaks are trying to dominate the country. Bosnian Croats uh, or Bosnian Croat leadership is uh, trying or hoping to reestablish their third entity. And the Bosnian Serb leadership uh, still insists on uh, removing Republika Srpska from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And thank you, uh, Sergio I want to bring in Alma Zadic uh, now, and I want to start with a question that is inspired by your biography, but also by some recent data that says that Bosnia and Herzegovina is probably the country that is experiencing one of, of the worst demographic decay uh, in the world. And according to some research for 60% of the uh, Bosnian youth, the, 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 the dream is only one, it is to leave the, the country. So, uh, I mean, is, is this a country with a future, the, a country that has this kind of, uh, of figures? I think the... Now I'm on. Uh, it's a very interesting question that you're posing and also now listening to uh, Srech Kolatal and his analysis. Uh, it uh, points out even more how, and it, it makes it understandable why in particular the young generation is so frustrated with the situation in Bosnia. Over 30 years, people are not, the politicians or the main leaders of the country are not talking about anything else but their nationalist rhetoric and they, who has what and who has more power, who has less power. And the important is to, to build this country to make sure that the people, that the young people, that the young generation have a perspective. And I know for also from a lot of friends who are leaving the country who say, Alma, I'm just fed up with it. I'm fed up with this nationalist rhetoric. I have no perspective in this country and corruption is ruining it all. And I think that's, I mean, this is one also of the major issues. And the nationalist rhetoric on the one side, but we have, a, I mean, Bosnia and Herzegovina has a huge corruption problem. And this corruption problem leads the youth to leave the country because they say, if I, I want my kids to be educated, I want my kids to go to school, I want if someone is hit by a car that these people responsible for the car hit is being also held responsible before in front of a court and not uh, having the possibility to um, get out just by paying an envelope. I want to build a company and all I have to do is pay uh, certain uh, leaders, uh, certain amounts of money in, um, 
in envelopes and and that's and that's what's ruining that's what's ruining the country that's what's ruining uh, the perspective of people um and i i was in bosnia recently in bosnia and herzegovina i spent some time in sarajevo i met with political leaders um and and it's, it's actually really interesting because the first day i met with um with the minister of justice and with political leaders and it was such a frustrating day. I mean, really, I had the impression that nothing is coming out of it. Um, we know that Bosnia and Herzegovina has to do, has to make some progress to show that it is ready to uh, implement certain laws so that it can show to the European Union, okay, we are ready to at least get the candidate status uh, for the European Union. Uh, but, but I, there's one thing I don't understand. If you if you say that they are frustrated, then why things don't change? Is it so that the nationalisms are, are self-sustaining? They are sustaining one another, or is it so that the young people don't don't vote? Why 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 if if people are tired, why there isn't a consequence? I, I think these are two things. Uh, first of all, uh, we really need. I mean, in particular, the European Union but also uh, those to the international community that is present needs to have a closer look at the elections. Uh, there, was, there are now some measures that the um, high representative implemented, but we all know and we hear stories that certain people are paid for to vote for certain parties. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to insinuate anything. Um, all I want to say that there are really amazing amount of young people who are getting frustrated, but there are also those who are active in NGOs, in the civil society, and who want to change this country. I had an excellent discussion with young, uh, young uh, people, with young leaders from the civil society who now actively wants to engage and try to convince the people to, first of all, to go to vote, because a lot of people are so frustrated that they are not voting, and that's also a democracy problem. And the second thing is um, that a lot of those say uh, nothing's going to come out of my voice. And that's why there are a lot of movements now, uh, in particular within the young people, to actually um, go to, to go and vote um, and, and to change uh, certain things. And I really hope that this young generation will, will manage to change. And why do I believe that um, it, it was in particular difficult because the corruption system and the criminal organized uh, cr uh, organized criminal organizations they profit from such a weak state and as long as as the state is as weak as it is uh it's going to be very difficult to kind of change this perpetual circle that uh, that exists in in in, in uh, bosnia and herzegovina so the only hope that i have is the young people who really have a change have a possibility to change something uh, you come from a region which is uh, traditionally an industrial region and a progressive uh, region. It was so, uh, even in time of Yugoslavia, it was so during the war and after the war. Um, what are the possibilities, in your opinion, for uh, progressive uh, uh, forces? I mean, I, I, I really believe that it is, uh, well, there are two things. First of all, um, the European Union um, and over the last 10, 15 years, um, it was not on the agenda, the Western Balkan was not on the agenda of the European Union. Um, and only, and a lot of things happened in the Western Balkans, a lot of things happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina, people are leaving, corruption is uh, um, skyrocketing. And, and we need, we need, I mean, I think that we as the European Union need to put Western Balkans back on the agenda, need to show the people in Bosnia and Herzegovina that there is a willingness to make Bosnia and Herzegovina, make the Western Balkans part of the European Union, because that will motivate the young people, that will motivate young generations to really go engage and, 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 and change during these elections, in these elections, change things because that's so necessary. And I think that the European Union plays a central role. And we, we as the European Union, as the member states of the European Union, in particular Austria, who is very a close partner to Bosnia and Herzegovina and to the Western Balkans, 
needs to show its willingness that we are supporting Bosnia and Herzegovina on their way and that we will do whatever it takes uh, to that, get that country back into the European family. Thank you, Alma Zadic. Stay with us. Uh, Austria, definitely very important country for Bosnia and Herzegovina. It has, uh, well, incredibly important historical ties. It has ties in the present. It's, by the way, one of the main uh, destinations of uh, uh, Bosnian and Herzegovinian citizens as uh, uh, foreign workers. It's impressive the amount of uh, Austrian registration plates that you see uh, when you uh, drive uh, through uh, Bosnia. Another country that has uh, uh, ties uh, important ties with Bosnia and Herzegovina is Slovenia. They were together in Yugoslavia. Uh, also Slovenia, a lot of foreign workers from, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, very active uh, in the Council on uh, uh, the Bosnia situation and the Western Balkans. We uh, had announced the presence of the Foreign Minister of Slovenia, Tanja Fajon, a former uh, MEP. Uh, unfortunately, she could not attend the debate, but decided to send us a video message. Let's watch it and then we'll uh, comment the messages that we have heard uh, so far with Andreas Sicilia. Dear organizers at Global Progressive Forum, dear friends at SD in European Parliament, fellow participants, firstly, I regret that my busy schedule does not allow me to be with you live on this important discussion on democracy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I nevertheless hope my contribution will be appreciated. This GPF event is happening just a few days after I hosted the Blit Strategic Forum which took place amid very challenging times for Europe and the entire world. The war in Ukraine is changing the geopolitical landscape of the world and is having a profound effect on international security, including in the Western Balkans, a transformation that is unfolding right before us. Russian Federation's sphere of interest is drawing a dividing line also in the Western Balkans, and we must, for the sake of peace and stability in whole Europe, prevent any new bloc divisions. As the EU enlargement has once again become a key geopolitical issue, the road we choose will drastically shape the future of this region. Otherwise, countries could be more exposed to Russia's increased influence and destabilizing ambitions. Roosevelt said, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The worst thing you can do is nothing. I wish to speak about I decisions and choices related to Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I will focus on three essential messages. My first message is for the politicians in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is high time you take a decision to focus on issues that will bring the country closer to the EU. I'm saying this because without a genuine commitment and determination that only politicians can show, Bosnia and Herzegovina will continue stagnating in political, economic and security issues. I appeal to all, European politicians alike, not to trade egoism and political points in domestic political arenas for EU unity, solidarity and compromise. Secondly, we, the EU members and institutions, have also our homework to do to regain our credibility and re-establish the transformative power in the neighbourhood. The EU must ensure that the enlargement process is fair and it can act as a role model. We need to pursue a clearer enlargement policy and find ways to accelerate democratic processes in these countries, given that they have not made significant progress in this area for over 20 years. Bosnia and Herzegovina can find a true friend and a partner in Slovenia and in me personally. We will continuously encourage our partners in the EU to grant Bosnia and Herzegovina the candidate status by the end of this year. We feel morally obliged to do so and I can assure you that we will be tireless in our efforts it is essential that the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina receive a positive signal and remain hopeful. And lastly, given the nature of this forum, I emphasize that the decision to support the integration represents a social democratic choice in its essence. The EU integration namely equals stability, prosperity and welfare in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
at the same time, it equals fighting populism, radicalism and nationalism, virtues that represent the core of social democracy. It equals a multicultural, tolerant and progressive Bosnia and Herzegovina and is nothing less than a guarantee for mere survival of this country. I thank you all for your attention and wish productive discussions. That was uh, the Foreign Minister of Slovenia, Tanja Fajon. We are back uh, live uh, with these discussions on uh, Bosnia call for reform. And by the way, because we are live, if you are following us on Facebook or Twitter, we very much welcome your uh, comments, your questions, and I'm try to uh, put them to uh, the speakers. So, Andreas Schide, before talking about the European Union, as we said, you know, Bosnia, we heard uh, our speakers from uh, Sarajevo, from Vienna, I mean, we have populist nationalist forces in Austria, in Switzerland, in Italy, in many countries. But here we have three kind of self-sustaining uh, themselves. How do, you, how do you get out of this? Uh, how to get out, I think, is the hard question. But what we witness, what we see now is that these uh, forces block each other and every necessary reform of the country. Just to give for one example, uh, when the leadership of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina visited the European Parliament, and there was a discussion in front of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament, and every one of those blamed the other two that they are the reason why nothing is moving on. Quite convenient. It, yeah, and it's in no other state of the world this would happen that the three leading forces are blaming in front of the international community that the other ones are uh, the disaster. Usually, especially when you travel abroad, you try to show unity and putting forward uh, uh, the, 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 the programs. So what we see is that there are strong nationalists and sessionists. There is also influence from the outside. We should not forget this. It's not only about Bosnia, but sometimes for example, like the Croatian president or from Serbia or from other forces, there is also negative influence. We also know that the high commissioner is weakened because also Russia, let's say, withdraw the support of this concept of high commission. Also, he made some mistakes in the last weeks. Uh, and as uh, Alma Sadic was truly saying, we are also have a, the missing of a EU strategy in the last 10 years. Uh, uh, in this region. So what is, uh, because we always discuss inside this political bubble. And if we talk with people outside this bubble, it's quite easy. They say they are disappointed. It's a, it's a cheap excuse. No, nobody's working on educational reform, job reform, law reform, fighting corruption. Even it's sometimes I have the feeling some of these politicians, it's better to speak about nationalism than to do a law reform, which might bring maybe yourself or your friends into prison. So uh, they are blocking every reforms and the young people simply, they are pragmatic. They say, okay, if you don't deliver any reforms, we go. And I think this vicious circle has to be broken. And uh, when you ask me how, it's hard. What but, do you tell them when you meet them and you see that they are all blaming each other? Do you try to stop this blame game? I ask them one clear question. Say, sorry, I don't, I don't care about your blame game. I just want to know one thing. What you're doing for the next generation of your country? What? Give me two arguments. What you do that the next generation has the feeling that life in Bosnia will be better than it is now? And they, they don't have any answers. Why? Because they don't do anything. Let me bring in uh, Srećko Latal. Do you recognize uh, this analysis? Is, is the playing game the only game in town in Bosnia-Herzegovina? Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, this is what we are seeing every single day, uh, every single moment, on every single uh, level of the administration, from the state entity cantonal to local communities. But, I mean, there is... I mean, part of the problem is definitely populism, maybe even more than nationalism, because in Bosnia, like in the rest of the Balkans, sometimes it's very different, difficult to differentiate between a, a, a true nationalist and, and a good populist. Uh, so populism and nationalism is a major part of the problem. Uh, but other sides of, of, of the medal, uh, maybe even more important, is to understand that 
the reason why we are seeing these blame games, uh, be it in Brussels or in Sarajevo <clears throat> or, or anywhere else, is because we are seeing, in fact, a, a clash between different um, ideas for the country, different perceptions of the country, different uh, perceptions of the future for the country. I mean, a major part of the problem, as was mentioned uh, by uh, Minister Zadic and by uh, Minister Fayon, is that for, for the past 20, 25 years, Bosnia-Herzegovina, like the rest of the Balkan countries, they were supposed to have one joint common, uh, you know, strategy forward, and that was European Union. That perspective has effectively disappeared from the table, taken away not by Balkan countries, but by European Union and by EU member countries already five, six, seven years ago. And when this, when this joint uh, a, a target disappeared, different Balkan actors, different Balkan politicians started developing their own either new or old narratives. And this is what we are seeing today in Bosnia. We are seeing the conflict between, as I said, you know, uh, the idea of Bosnia do dominating the country, Croats having their small uh, entity and, and, and Serbs having a completely uh, separate country. But, um, you know, I, I would like to address the question that, that you asked in, in the previous part of the session, which is, I mean, why, why don't we see the change? And one of the reasons why, why we don't see a change, we don't see it in Bosnia, we don't see it in Serbia, we don't see it elsewhere, is because we have not the same political parties, but we have same policies. So we have different political parties and different political actors who are essentially using the same narrative, the same populist and, and self-serving uh, policies. And this is why we cannot have change. And unfortunately, these upcoming elections, they will not change anything for better. They may only change something for worse. The reason for this is because it, it is already too late. I mean, people will vote in the upcoming elections the way how do, but I can tell you that ordinary people, ordinary people, they don't see that they really have a choice. Let me throw in a, a human uh, story, the story of Lana Pudar, uh, this uh, uh, young uh, athlete from Mostar that won uh, the 200 meters butterfly at the World Swimming Championship in Rome. I think she doesn't even have a, a proper pool to, to train in, uh, in Mostar. And her victory, unfortunately, Bosnia's government doesn't win, doesn't have a lot of uh, gold medals uh, normally, triggered uh, a, a number of enthusiastic comments uh, on, on, on all parts of Bosnia-Herzegovina. The mayor of Banja Luka invited her to Banja Luka, said she's welcome there anytime. By the way, the mayor of Banja Luka is not from Dodik party, and perhaps you will tell me if, if that is some kind of a, a hope for, for, the, for the future of Republika Srpska. This kind of events, which actually show that Bosnia exists when we don't talk to politicians, um, are they just nice stories and remain like this, or they give us a ground for hope? Well, actually, thank you for this question, because that was the next thing that I wanted to say to answer your previous question, and that was, does Bosnia-Herzegovina has a future? And, and I do believe it has. And, and you know, I'm, because of this, I'm still living in this country as well as three and a half million of people. Uh, in fact, when you come to Bosnia-Herzegovina, when you ignore politicians, when you ignore media, when you ignore intellectuals and civil society, which are unfortunately became, which have become mostly uh, divided along ethnic and political lines over the recent years. When you talk to ordinary people, you see a country which is open to everyone. You see people who live uh, with each other, regardless of, you know, some of the very dark uh, uh, recent history they share. Uh, if you look at the, the, the level of, of ethnic incidents, uh, if you look at the, the crime, le crime levels in Bosnia-Herzegovina, you can see that they are lower than uh, on average in, in European Union. So, in fact, I, as, as a citizen of this country, I feel very safe in this country, uh, save our politicians. But you know, also to, 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 to address your question about uh, Lana Pudar, I mean, there is another example, another swimmer, uh, Amina Kaitas, who is also from Ostar, who unfortunately who was also swimming with very good results 
uh, for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, since uh, a month ago, she is now performing for the national team of Croatia because she simply didn't have any decent uh, conditions for her life and for her work in, in, in this country. Uh, Alma Zadic, uh, Srećko Latal says that we should talk to people other than uh, politicians, but uh, you are both a person that comes from Bosnia, but you are also a government minister, and you know that uh, governments and European Union uh, talk to governments, because after all, governments are in control and they are responsible. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy. How do, you, how, do you, how do you get out of this? Audio, please. No, I want to point out an example from my visit from Sarajevo. I, um, the second day of my visit, I, uh, I dedicated to the civil society and, um, and I had a very interesting and very encouraging um, encounter with a lot of young people. Uh, and one thing that, uh, that kind of fascinated me. There is this initiative that protects, I forgot the name of it. Um, there are two women who are organizing it. Uh, it's, a, it's a growing, um, it's a, it's a, it has growing attraction. They are trying to protect the uh, Neretva river in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they are trying to protect uh, the rivers in general. Um, and it's uh, so amazing how many people um, are actually trying to, to, to prevent the government from building some hydro plants there uh, in order to protect the environment. So in this environmental cause, a lot of young, engaged, vibrant and, and really uh, passionate uh, young people came together across different uh, ethnic, religious or whatever, whatever divisions uh, the, their, uh, their uh, governments or people in power uh, said to them they should be divided upon, but they all came together and they fight, fought for this cause. And I think one thing that is missing on the political level um, or among the political leaders is that they are divided by ideas. They are not, they are divided, now they are div dividing themselves by national, by uh, ethnic uh, divisions. But what we need is a fight, um, is a fight between, in between, I between ideas. Uh, being it, uh, you know, we want to have a more progressive or more social uh, country. We want to have a more um, uh, environmentally friendly country. So I think that's that's a main major point. And this one example is when you have these young people fighting for their environment, fighting for their homes, and fighting for their rivers, uh, was for me very encour encouraging and showed me that uh, this this this. This country has a future, and this country has a future in Europe, and uh, that's why I, I mean, it's, it's so incredibly uh, incredible to see how much power there is, and I hope that they will channel, manage to channel this power uh, to change the political system. Um, and when you say, uh, and of course, I, I as a member of government, I also talk to my. Um, to my counterpart, uh, the Minister of Justice from Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we signed a memorandum of understanding uh, regarding um, uh, regarding the development of rule of law, and and uh, and, uh, and and I think that's if if any change because I, as a Minister of Justice, and I am of the strong conviction that any country, and in particular the countries from from. Uh, former Yugoslavia from the Western Balkans, they need a strong rule of law, they need a strong fight against corruption because the people need to regain trust in their institutions because they've been so often disillusioned and so often um, uh, betrayed by the institutions that they should be represent be, that they should represent them. Um, and that's why um, this strong fight against corruption, the strengthening of rule of law and the judiciary is, is one of the greatest pillars that I try to foster with my political counterparts, because I think that's one of the foundation of democracy and, uh, and uh, could, could also be one of the channels for change. 
Thank you. Um, you may have noticed that uh, so far I was uh, not mentioning very much the EU and the role that it can uh, play. Uh, and that was because I wanted to leave this for our for the final part of our uh, discussion. And I would like to introduce this final part with uh, a video clip from uh, Josep Borrell. Josep Borrell, the High Representative, Vice President, uh, High Representative for Foreign uh, Policy. This is from a press conference he had in the, uh, on the 15th of uh, March. And let's hear what he says about European Union and Bosnia-Herzegovina. The Euro Force presence here to support the authorities in maintaining a safe and secure environment has become even more important, more important than ever. That's why we have almost doubled our presence on the ground with four additional companies and there are further assets offered by the European Union members to strengthen our capabilities even more. And in this tense moment, I want to reassure the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina of our unwavering commitment to maintain safety and stability. We have reinforced our ability to react swiftly in case of crisis. And this reflects the European Union commitment to the unity, to the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we will continue deterring those who would feel emboldened to undertake destabilization actions. I have to correct myself, that was not uh, from uh, uh, the, the council, that was from a speech that he had in Sarajevo on the 16th of March. But I remember in those days a, a council where basically the European Union uh, all of a sudden discovered a uh, new urgency for uh, the Western Balkans and for places like Bosnia. And the reason was the uh, war in Ukraine had started. So, Andreas Schide, what, uh, what is the situation? We haven't mentioned Ukraine so far. What is the situation now? With, uh, with Ukraine, how important it is that we don't uh, leave the Western Balkans? I think the Ukraine united the European Union also in its strategy towards uh, Western Balkans. And maybe what was criticized uh, before, and I think it's right, that the European Union was not very active on the ground, not very present, showed the importance uh, 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 to, to work more with the countries of the Western Balkans. And, it's, uh, and then secondly, of course, it's also that most Western Balkan states also immediately supported the sanction regimes and joined, let's say, the united value uh, uh, of European values, not ex except this, this Russian uh, intervention. Most, Serbia, for example, was a little bit split in this, this issue, unluckily. But uh, secondly, I think, e what means Europe being present there? I think the High Commissioner mentioned it's about stability and security. We have to be clear that we have to, to provide this also in the future, knowing also that the status of, of all the troops on the ground is getting complicated because of uh, 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 the UN and the Russian uh, uh, veto there. But also the EU stands for, like Alma Sadic was saying, what is the most important is fighting corruption, rule of law. And the EU stands for and has also to stand clearly, therefore, to push for it, but also to help to, to implement this. Uh, but then if you want to push on that, how can you at the same <coughs> time go on with uh, uh, enlargement? I mean, is enlargement a reward for the progress you have done or it is a tool to, to create uh, change? I think enlargement is a... Is a is, a, is based also on, on the progress. But as the European Union, uh, with, because of symbolic uh, act towards Ukraine, said they should be candidate status, I think uh, Bosnia is more in shape to be candidate status than Ukraine. So therefore, I think it is, can be also a useful tool, but not a tool to award the ca current leaders there, but a tool to implement reforms which are necessary uh, and, and important. But for this, probably, we need also something like a new consensus of Bosnian politics, uh, which is more working for the country and less for individually each, each, each himself. Srećko Latal, yesterday we saw Commissioner Lenarcic in Sarajevo, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina joining the civil protection mechanism. That is a clear political science. Do you... 
do people uh, mm, follow these things and do you think it has an impact on the way they're going to vote uh, in, in October? Unfortunately, absolutely not. And, and these news, you know, if, if you look at the, the local media, you can see that most of the media have almost completely ignored this. Not only because of the fact that the pre-election campaigns have started in full and now the main focus on those campaigns, but because of the fact that the European Union uh, has simply disappeared from the radar scene uh, screen of, of, of the Balkan countries. Uh, let me um, comment on, 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 on the statements from, from uh, Mr. Borrell and the others. Unfortunately, the European Union for too many years was too strong on words and very weak and inconsistent uh, in, in its deeds. Um, for example, um, European Commission has officially announced back in 2016, so six years ago, that Kosovo has fulfilled all criteria to get visa-free regime, they still don't have visa-free regime. One year later, European Union has given visa-free regime to Ukraine, and uh, up uh, until today, since February when the war started in Ukraine, some six million uh, Ukrainian citizens, migrants, have entered European Union. And European Commission was saying, that or European member countries or rather were saying that the main reason why Kosovo did not get a visa-free regime was because they were concerned about increased number of migrants. Another example is uh, North Macedonia and, and Albania. I mean, North Macedonia did what no one really expected. I mean, they changed even their name against the general uh, uh, feeling uh, of, of, of majority of the population and they got nothing in return. Uh, in fact, the, 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 the changes to the methodology that were made, uh, and according to them, um, North Macedonia was given uh, the date and, and Albania as well recently, they made only the situation worse because now uh, these changes have essentially incorporated uh, bilateral issues into the chapters. As a okay, result, so very, as very a result let, me, let me just finish this because it is very important. As a result in future, uh, all EU member countries neighboring with, 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 with the Balkan, so Croatia, um, um, the Romania, Bulgaria, and, and Hungary, they will be able to condition further advancement of Balkan countries on their uh, meeting their requirements regarding their bilateral issues. So to, to finalize, what we have seen at the last council was the final disgrace of the European Union enlargement perspective when uh, Ukraine was given candidate status. And I'm not complaining because of this, because Bosnia didn't get it, but because we all know very well that Ukraine will not get a membership ever, or at least for another several decades. I but let's go back to Bosnia. Yeah. Let's go. Let's keep it to. Let's I keep it just, on Bosnia. I just, I just wanted to finish with Bosnia. Uh, Madame Fayon uh, said that she hoped that Bosnia Herzegovina will get candidate status by the end of the year. I hope it will not, because the matter of fact is that Bosnia Herzegovina and our governments and politicians have not done anything to meet cri criteria set out by European Commission for the candidate status to be given. In these conditions, given, giving Bosnia and Herzegovina the candidate status will only feed into the pre-election or post-election campaigns and will further undermine already dented image of European Union in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the rest of the world. Okay, so Almazadic, the spot is on you because we know that Austria is a very pro-enlargement uh, uh, country, <clears throat> but uh, Srećko Latal basically says we, we shouldn't uh, uh, hurry with that. What do you answer to that? I mean, uh, oh, there's, <laughs> I understood him a little bit differently. Um, one thing that Srećko Kanadal also uh, Latal pointed out was that, and I need to under, underline this, you, the European Union, and we as member states uh, should remain credible. And remaining credible means that we really, if we have developed a strategy for the Western Balkans, for the countries, and he mentioned an excellent example, and that is uh, North Macedonia. I mean, they changed their name, and this is hard. If you know the Balkans, if you know the people from the Western Balkans, 
And if you know uh, how proud and stubborn they can be, changing a name is a lot. And getting nothing in return undermines the credibility of the European Union and the credibility of the, what they require of each country. And all those measures that the European Union requires of the countries of the Western Balkans, if they are fulfilled, they need, they need, there needs to be certain reward. And um, that's why I, I, I do think that we need, an, uh, as European Union, we need a strategy and not meaning a strategy, you have to feel, fulfill thousands of those uh, criteria and thousands of those measurements and then you can access the uh, European Union. I, I'm convinced that we need to, um, to have certain steps and certain rewards in between so that we, uh, that the, so that the European Union can, and uh, it somehow, it just works that way. It works for Croatia also in that way and for many other countries. The accession to the European Union can be a carrot. And this can urge the politicians and the leaders to change things. What I also understand what Serej Kolodal said is, and I also support him in there, um, when I went to Sarajevo, I was the, of the conviction that we need to act, grant the accession, uh, the candidate status as soon as possible. Uh, but it's what I also heard from, from people there, and in particular from the civil society, they said that they are actually happy that they were not granted uh, the accession, that, uh, the, the candidate status uh, now, because this will waken up the people and will wake, shaken them up and tell them, look what your politicians did to you. Basically, nothing. They did nothing for the country to, to, to get to, to, to progress. No, they did nothing uh, that they were required to do by the European Union. And the European Union actually, in the last council meeting, asked for three things, for three laws to be implemented. And also, this is now in a deadlock. Uh, so I think... Uh, right now, it's, it's, it's election time. It's, it's, uh, it's very difficult and intense. Um, but on a larger scale, the European Union and its member states need to be credible and need to fulfill their promises and never forget that this access to the European Union can, be, can also serve as a carrot for the politicians there to act because that's something that really helped Croatia enter the European Union. It was always someone behind in the European Union pushing and saying, if you do this, you will get that. If you do this, you will get that. And it worked. Uh, Srej Kolatal, I understand the European Union can be slow, can be cumbersome and uh, certainly very frustrating. But are there real alternatives? I mean, what will you do? Will you go with uh, uh, Turkey's Erdogan? Erdogan was there uh, yesterday. Will you go with, with Russia? Um... I mean, I think that the the, 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 the the choice that your question posed is a very unfair one. Uh, however, it is a very realistic one. And um, my answer may surprise you, but uh, many uh, Balkan leaders see Russian presence, Turkish presence, um, much more realistic and concrete than everything that European Union is promising but not delivering. I mean, one thing is clear, no one, no one can or will replace European Union with all its political, economic and transformative might it possess. But the problem is that we don't see that European Union, we haven't been seeing it for a long, long time. Let me remind you that the French President Macron said in 2019, officially and publicly, that not a single new country will join European Union until the European Union decides what it is and, and what it will be. And I can tell you that, you know, the Balkan countries and Balkan leaders and ordinary people have heard these words very well, and they still remember them very well. So we should not be talking about any enlargement, albeit slow, because there is no enlargement. We don't see it. Uh, I can tell you that the, the one thing that can help Balkan, that one thing that can help prevent another catastrophe of the Balkans, potentially including new conflicts, not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, is 
serious and realistic and concrete and urgent change of the EU approach towards the Balkans. And I tell you, you don't have much time. I mean, the European Union has until the end of this year or maximum beginning of the next year. If the European Union does not put on the table a new and relevant and concrete plan for a new kind of enlargement that we've been hearing for a while, both Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as different Bosnian and, 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 and Balkan leaders will go in all different ways. And this situation will sooner or later lead to another conflict. Thank you, Sergio Latal. Um, I, we are approaching the end of this uh, um, debate, this uh, discussion on uh, Bosnia general elections, a call for reform. So I would like to ask uh, uh, briefly to you the, the two final questions. Do you think the Bosnians uh, hold, in spite of all we said, the, uh, some of the keys to, to their future? And do you think the European Union is learning the lessons? Uh, in this order, Alma Zadic, Sarec Palatal, and we'll close with uh, Andreas Cidr. So Alma Zadic first. Uh, so I'm, I'm really of the strong conviction that, um, that, that the European Union also seeing now what's happening in Ukraine and seeing how strong the, the influence in the Western Balkan is geopolitical influence from other leaders being from Russia, being from Saudi Arabia, uh, but also Turkey. Um, it is the European Union who actually really needs to see this, uh, this region as a missing link in the, in the European family and uh, needs to advance its uh, strategy and needs to advance uh, to put this to the Western Balkan back on the priority on the agenda and back uh, the back on the on the on the first second thing uh, on the agenda. And the second thing is, I strongly um, believe that it can Bosnia and Herzegovina can only progress and can only. Um, move forward if we support, and I mean, we, the European leaders, support the local initiatives, the civil society, because this country desperately needs change. Thank you, Alma Zadic, Srečko Atal. Well, I mean, as I said at the beginning of, of, of this uh, debate, um, unfortunately, the time is running out. And the upcoming elections that are scheduled for October 2nd this year may undo the Dayton Peace Accord. They, can, they may bring the end of the Dayton Peace Accord. And unless Office of the High Representative does not impose uh, some solutions, which some, even some EU member countries oppose, the country will be heading towards complete disaster. And that disaster will require much bigger much more robust uh, intervention from the international community to prevent new war. So uh, unfortunately, uh, at this stage, I'm afraid that uh, ordinary people in Bosnia and Herzegovina, they really uh, don't know how to influence uh, local politicians. They don't know how to prevent this uh, catastrophic endgame. And because of this local and regional situation, but also because of extremely complicated geopolitical situation. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, like the rest of the Balkans, uh, today depends on international developments, on geopolitical situation, on foreign influences. Uh, we would still, most of, of, of people in the Bosnia and in the rest of the Balkans would still always choose European Union uh, uh, versus Russia or Turkey or Gulf countries. But uh, so far, uh, we had the impression that European Union was not really giving us the choice. If European Union changes its mind, and if it changes its approach to the EU enlargement by the end of the year, and if uh, Office of the High Representative uh, prevents the, the, the breakup of the Dayton Peace Accord, we may still have a chance. Thank you. Andreas Schiede. So, many questions. Do you many questions. Just some quick remarks. Uh, I share very much what was said, but I, I have to say also, if we criticize Dayton and we can criticize also the question of the electoral law of Bosnia and so on, at the end, we should not forget, even with Dayton and with this electoral law, the politicians in the stage uh, could behave different. 
So what I think Bosnia also needs is a new consensus of working together. Uh, looking at Alma Sadic and uh, um, in, in Austria, the opposition and the government has more or less the same opinion towards the Balkans, for example, on enlargement, how to support them. So why not Bosnian politicians could at least have one uh, common approach? Secondly, also, I think we need new role models and new persons, like the mayor of Sarajevo. Uh, uh, she is a positive figure, which gives a lot of hope to young people to say, okay, there is somebody who might maybe have changes. Also, I think uh, Minister Sadic is one of the examples. When you go to Bosnia, they always say, ah, but there is uh, Alma Sadic in Austria. So it is important also for people to give them hope that something can change. Secondly, we are in front of the election. And it's the moment of the voters. And even if very much is not perfect in Bosnia. But the voters can decide. They have a decision. There are candidates which are for a better Bosnian future, and but the people have to vote for them. This is the task of Sunday, October 2nd. And we have to bring in those activists, uh, these very engaged people outside the political parties and movements. Those are in, in journalism, on the universities, the activists, the youth activists. And they have to come in into the political scenery, take over the parties, engage themselves and change the mood of, of the country. I know it's complicated. And I'm afraid also that the election will not immediately give us the answers. But I think this is what is necessary for the future, also for Bosnia. The European Union will get its acts together, I think? Uh, the European Learn. Union, I think it got better. And the European Union enlargement strategy is always on criteria based. But also I think the High Commission understood that he has to engage himself more on the Balkans because... Uh, Sometimes it's not the best idea always to let the Enlargement Commissioner act himself. Uh, and I think also that the President of the Commission and the national governments uh, also have to engage stronger. Not only Germany, Austria, Slovenia, also Spain, France and all the other countries. The series of discussions from the Global Progressive Forum is going to continue in October with a webinar on China's future that is ahead of the Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. And another webinar is being prepared on the Arab Springs and what is left of them 10 years on. The dates are still to be defined, so stay tuned. I would like to thank our guests. I would like to thank the GPF for inviting me as an external moderator. I would like to thank uh, the technicians here at the studio of the European Parliament. And most of all, I would like to thank you for having been uh, with us during uh, this hour. We always welcome your feedback. Goodbye.